fried, going to get crumb. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping, yeah. riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come through, four foes, stay the tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me lap, yeah. watch the trunk crack. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, see be running back. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe AP, yeah. maybe AD. Yeah. I ain't even tripping cause we some athletes. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. But we gon' get it cause we gotta finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. Put them boys yeah. little, paint like a Skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping, I ain't never double dribble. Yeah. Cause I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door, maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine cause I gotta kill a cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Oh, you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. All right, welcome to Fullback You. This is going to be a great podcast. Been uh, here for almost an hour, thankful to my guys. So let me bring them in. First of all, Antonio Perkins, how you feeling, sir? Oh, I'm feeling well. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you being here. Teddy Lehman, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. It's always good to be back with you guys, former players. The stories never stop. Now, We've but, already been podcasting exactly. for an hour right That's, now. <laughs> We've got live footage. This shit. We're going to sell this shit, too, so don't worry. But, uh, no, it's just been amazing. Just, uh, Perk, tell everybody what you're up to these days. Uh, right now, I'm working for Aspire Home Health Care. So when you have a knee replacement or something, you go home, you need someone to come around, our nurses come out and take care of, good care of you. Teddy, tell me, I think everybody knows what you do, but just tell us a, a kind of update you and drop your uh, radio show. Uh, yeah, man, I, I've got a radio show on Sports Talk 1400. A, it's a station here in Norman. Um, we're on 1400 AM, uh, 99.3 FM. Um, I do commercial real estate stuff as well. Work for Chicago Title up in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun gig. And then... Um, do the, the OU football games, um, do the broadcast with Toby Rowland for the OU football games, and uh, that's about it. Chase a four-year-old around, too. Yeah, you're amazing at that. Um, I'm the same way, chasing a 10-year-old. And, you know, this show's called Fullback You, and we started it just as a joke because I couldn't be an All-American. You two guys <laughs> were, obviously, you laugh, and you know that that's a, a huge opportunity. But um, I want to just get to the – we're going to tell everybody from day one to to the your, to your now, but just tell me what OU was like, Perk, when you first got there. Oh man, it was nothing like I expected. They sold me a dream. <laughs> I got here. Uh, I You're gonna start early. Don't yeah, worry, it's yeah, easy. Yeah, that's verbatim. That's Coach Gunny told me. You come in, you come in early, play early. So I come in my senior year, in the summertime. I made it for about a whole week, and I was like, I got saved by the oil bowl. I went home for the oil bowl, and never came back until the time to report. <laughs> but they didn't tell me that how the how intense the workouts would be. Oh so I recall my first workout of the summer. Came, came early, we're on a game field, pulling sleds up and down the game field. I do it the first time, no problem. We had Antoine Savage and Brandon Everidge, those guys, no problem. Do it the second time. The third time I got about 85 yards down, was running in place. <laughs> After that, I went to stands, I ran a bill with Shelby in the stands and sat there. Yep. I think everyone's first workout was like that. I, my first, well, I don't know if it was my first, but one of my early memories of uh, summer workouts was we used to run the ramps, and then early on we ran them one at a time. So you'd sprint one ramp. There's probably about three or four groups, you know, uh, running backs, linebackers, how they wide receivers, DBs, and you just one after another up to the top and. First one, because some of the other guys were always talking shit. Like, I heard you were supposed to be fast and everything. I was like, all right, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. First ramp, boom, I roast everyone, okay? So, and then before I even catch my breath, we're on the second ramp, mm -hmm. and it's about time to go, hand down. Go. I get about second or third on, on the second one. Third ramp. Dead last, I, I mean, it was like I was done the rest of the time. And the older guys were like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and you learn really quickly that uh, speed doesn't matter. Speed doesn't matter. <laughs> and you are all of a sudden, I mean, you're 18 years old. And there's guys that are, you know, 22-year-old men out there that you're running against and lifting with. And it's like, man. I think I may be in the wrong spot. <laughs> I'm, still to, I'm still trying to figure out how some guys were able to hide during the ramps. Mm -mm. You, never, you never see that happen? Book. Well, book. <laughs> <laughs> Book's the famous story of taking the elevator yeah. down, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is the smartest thing ever. Yeah. I, can't, I, 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 I wish I would have thought of that myself. <laughs> Uh, man, we, we again, my first workout, uh, stadiums. I got there on a Monday. Like you, Perk, you kind of talked about it, just showing up a little bit late. Um, Y'all had been going for about two weeks. Schmitty calls us up in a switzer. I'll never forget it. Like, it was the most humbling day of my life. 
get us a break. Everybody jog outside. We're following him. I am i don't know what to expect. He's like, guys, last Friday's workout was bullshit. We're going to do some stadiums and get right and blah, blah, blah. And you need to do it. And you need to do it. And you need to do it. And he pointed to me. And I'm like, I, I, okay, whatever, you know. Like you said, Teddy, man, you make it to four. You make it to five. About six, dog. I was just like, at the stadiums on day one, it was not a good combination. You, you guys came in at the wrong time because, like, in, when we came in in 2000, mm. it was brutal. Hell yeah. But by the time you got there, the amount of – it was just as brutal, but we were doing so much more of the same mm. stuff. Yeah. And I think whenever you started, that's whenever they did the – they timed us up oh, yeah, and, and, and timed and us down. down. No, it was awful. <laughs> awful. Yeah. Perk, just kind of talk about the differences between then and now. Well, you talk about now as far as workouts so that or just yeah. what you see from the football from then to now and just what you see? Well, I see now from their workouts. I was like, I, they couldn't make it our time, our era. I don't, I don't see them making it, especially with Smitty. Even with, towards the end of Smitty being here, you could tell how people were, you hear about people calling compliance and you're like, hey, we're getting enough water breaks. Water, what? We don't know what water was back then. <laughs> <laughs> like water, that's, that's sweat coming down your face <laughs> to your mouth. So, so the difference there was, it was way different. Like, I, I don't know how, looking back at it, I tell people all the time, I don't know how I made it through any of the workouts. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Because yeah. I remember one time doing ramps, stadiums, and the shuttles all on the same day. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it was brutal, yeah, for but sure. Before you go, Teddy, and I want to compliment you After guys. squats. Yeah. You guys were great leaders with it. Because what Schmitty did a good job of was turning your juniors and seniors leaders against you. And if I wasn't getting it done, you guys did a great, great job of it. Before I had to say that, but you guys did a great job of helping mold me in that. But, Teddy, what do you think differences between then and now? Um, man, everything is different between then and now. Um, and, you know, it's not the player's fault. It's just it's kind of the what what the whole system has kind of turned into. You know, um, the the compliance stuff has really changed the game in, in the strength and conditioning world as far as time. They got a timer going. They got compliance people in there making sure that they don't go over time. Uh, the players know that you can't punish mm-hmm. them with with extra stuff because that because of the the hour limits and stuff what like tell, that. What do you tell us? Go see Bob. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Bob was the, the, the Justin yeah, yeah, right. Jr. Yeah, there it is. So you're just yeah. screwed either way. So so that that whole thing has changed. It's kind of taken some of the teeth out of the the strength and conditioning program. But you know, as far as the football, like all, all the rules changes hurt defense yep. um, it makes it more difficult to play defense um, you know there's some stuff that offenses are able to get away with that used to there's there's no way you, you couldn't have linemen downfield yep. um, some of the pick stuff that they're able to get away with is 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 illegal but you know they're not calling it so it makes makes it tough and you mix all that together with the social media environment mm-hmm. that these kids have to deal with you know, being pumped up as as superstars whenever they're sophomores, juniors in high school, and you come in and you've got this big platform to where you really you you because the fans tell you that you are something big yeah. and something special, and you carry that into into the into the program, and it's it's just kind of changed the dynamic there a little bit, but. It's just it's the day we live in. It's not going back, I'll tell you that. No, you're right. And I, I think there was a collective group when I got there. I could just tell you my experience. There was a collective group of guys that said, you were fucking going to get this shit done if you were going to be around here. It, it, it wasn't even the coaches, Teddy. I mean, you smirking because you know it's true. There was a collective group of guys that would say, J.D., get your ass out of here. Go get some extra work in. When you're ready to come in, when you're ready to do this shit, then you'll get, you know, but this is the standard that we have. This is what we have to do. Nobody, the ramps ain't going to wait on the stadium, the abs, the, the the kickovers. The one day I got kicked out. Teddy kicked me out. It wasn't even Smitty. I mean, you know, I, and I couldn't blame him. You know, I, I, I'm I'm down there with a group. I played as a freshman. You know, I I should be ready to do these things. And if I'm not, then that shit is on me. Uh, but back to the defense. Uh, Let you know, me just say oh, real quick. I'll say some too. Yeah. Good. I appreciate that, but yeah. let me let me say this. In fairness. The threat of having to do a workout again. Again, come back. Is, see you at three. Is, I would like to sit here and say that it was about <laughs> discipline and uh, trying to win football games. But more than anything, it was about just not having to come back and do the workout again. Shoot, what about come back on a, you come back on a Saturday before? Saturday. Oh, Saturday. my God. <laughs> what were you going to say? What you think well, no, no, I was going to ask Teddy, too, about um, – this day and age, this era, like targeting, we think about targeting. Like, I don't think anybody on our defense, when we play, would have made it through a game That's with targeting. Not fallbacks <laughs> either. We have to, I mean, it's a different game. I, yeah, it's, 
they're flag happy. I mean, you, you've got to adjust to it, but it is hard. And, and it's, changed the, it's changed the way you have to tackle, right? Mm-hmm. Because whenever I tackled, I tried to run this little horseshoe right there on my helmet. I tried to run that through the other guy's helmet, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what I did. High and hard is how they, they, they taught it. And you try and run that through the other guys right through his chin. And they'll pop you for that now. I mean, it's it's illegal. So if, if you catch a guy, a big hit like that, they're going to flag you. So you got to change your target area. And sometimes, it, to me, it doesn't even look like it's – if it's helmet to helmet, it's just if it's a big hit, natural right? Play. Yeah. Natural play. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna they're gonna hit you for just a big hit, and you know I understand trying to make the game safe, and and that's good and all, but I don't like ejecting a kid a one time, a one time deal. You know, I mean, if if it's an overthrown ball mm-hmm. and a safety comes and the receivers the ball's over, the play's over, and he just lights him up. Okay. Malicious I, intent. Malicious yeah, yeah, intent. Absolutely. I'm all for that. But on a bang bang play where a guy's trying to make a competitive play on the football or something like that, kick him out. I mean, you work. I mean, how many hours you put in off season? Uh, you know, whether it's practice, whether it's uh, conditioning PM, stuff. PM. Yeah. And you got what twelve opportunities, yeah. and they're going to take one from you. I, I can't get on board with that. Well, the, I, the change that I see too, and y'all can comment on this, but you know, and I, I told this on the last pod. But the only reason that I got to play, you know, my first workout was the stadiums. My first practice, Teddy, you pushed me down. I thought I wasn't shit. I thought I was never going to play. Um, the only reason I did get to play was because about three weeks into training camp, we started going to short yardage, and we couldn't get a fucking yard on our defense. And people laugh at that, but we. It was that way. I mean, our defensive line was too good. Y'all, we went through four <coughs> running backs and four fullbacks in one day. And finally, they were like, he wanted JD, get in. Y'all try it. And we tried to get a yard. You mentioned some of the style changes. I mean, we can't run ISO like that, like we used to anymore no. with, with fullbacks. That's targeting. You can't ser- seriously just su- sit your fullback back there in power and just go after, uh, you know, uh, running back or linebackers and corners like that anymore. So to me, it's there's a little bit of a stylistic change, but, and, and that's just kind of what I wanted to get to you guys about i mean we y'all were this defense where um you know i, I remember it like it was yesterday teddy we get down to the goal line y'all are in a four three you walk posh up i mean every safety's right here corners right there it's pretty simple everybody yeah. i mean can you block where the guys are gonna be i you mean you got a gap you got a gap and you know it's all about trust too you know when you get into a defense and you've been giving up yards you've been giving up points mm-hmm. uh you know they've been getting five six yards to carry you start to say, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and go do this guy's job because we're we're getting beat here." And you start to get out of your gap. But when you trust all other ten guys out there, you just take care of your responsibility. It makes it easy, honestly. Yeah. So for me, it was Mike Stoops and Brent Venables. They had us prepare. I, I never felt more prepared for a game than I did playing here at Oklahoma. My first year in the NFL, preparing myself for a game is way different than having them tell you this is where there's the tendencies. You got your tendencies out yourself when you get to that level, and so it's like, well, well, dang, Mike, well, that was that was gurus and coming down. Absolutely, I knew exactly where to be, and if I get out of place, this is going to happen to me. I knew the consequences, so it's one of the things where, like Tay said, we trust everybody that extra film, you know where to be, do your job, well, I'll do mine. We're all going to come together, eleven players, make it work. Well, you you, t- you talked about. <clears throat> Like the first practice where I, I pushed you down and you're like I don't I shouldn't be here. Is you probably running a flat Absolutely. route and I, just, I used to just go to the jack. Coach needs all this to knock you down. <laughs> so, like I we all felt the same way though, right? So, whenever I first I remember I had my my truck packed full of stuff. I was coming up for to start working out in the summer. I was just I couldn't wait. It was going to be the greatest thing ever. And I parked my truck. I walk across the Switzer Center. And Coach V walks out there to meet me, and the guys had just got out of a workout, and Torrance Marshall's there. And Coach V's like, Torrance, come over here. I want you to meet Teddy. And 6'3", 255 pounds of grown-ass man (laughs) walks over. He's, I mean, he is just thick and jacked. He's got a full beard. And he's like, he this Torrance is a starting Mike. You'll be his backup. I'm like, backup. <laughs> like I, I mean, I'm like, dude. I, I mean, yeah. there's no way I can compete with that. And I couldn't, by the way. I mean, I was, I was total shit as a player <laughs> at Oklahoma for most of my first two years. But watching guys like that, you know, in practice, we're do, doing drills, linebacker drills, and I'm watching Torrance, and I'm like. 
there's no way I'll ever be that good. So it's a it's a process from when you show up no doubt. to when you leave. The amount of strides you make as a yeah, player. That's true. Is, I, almost is went, I almost went home my freshman year. I almost like called it quits. I called my mom crying, my uncle crying. Like this is not for me because um, I remember national team, 2000 defense. I'm playing scout team running back. I'm like, what the hell am I doing doing this? <laughs> Next, you know, Torrance Marshall hit me, and I gotta hit these gaps and stuff. And and then, so I remember JT Thatcher got mad at me because I made him miss. And then he was like, do it again. You made him miss again. Do it again. Then he's like, come on, per man. I'm like, I don't wanna get hit. <laughs> I don't want y'all cats hitting me. Yeah. So I went home crying. Like Coach Cal was like. Um, Either make them miss, or you're gonna do this the rest of your career. I'm like, put me in a receiver. Don't put me over here as running back. Mm -hmm. So I made them miss a couple more times, and never, never had to Dude, worry about that again. That first training camp. So we did. This is whenever you could do unlimited amount of two days. <laughs> so that first camp, I was talking to Coach uh, Bob Stoops about this not too long ago. We did 17 straight days of two days. Mm -hmm. Every single practice was padded. Oh it was God. full yeah. pads in the morning and shoulder pads and helmets in the afternoon. Yeah. We conditioned every, every, every practice single practice. every practice. It was either the four quarters push up mm -hmm. still or it was sprints. Three trippers. And dude, we were three or four days in, mm -hmm. and I remember being in the up in the bud, and I was sitting there with Dan and. Uh, Donley and, and some of the other guys were sitting there after after a day and everyone's just kind of like zoned out. And Dan's like, I'm quitting. And <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was waiting on someone else to quit so I could quit too. Do you remember where and, I going up on stretchers? We, uh, Jamal, oh, yeah, like, dude. Yes, we got full body cramps. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, so I, we we were all about. Everyone was like, yeah, let's let's all just quit, you know, because yeah. we were we were. But it's like, let's. Let's make it through tomorrow, and we'll see if tomorrow's better. Yeah. And it wasn't, but <laughs> after that day, we're like, well, let's let's one more day, and it was a grind like no other. But we made it through, and I, I'm telling you, everyone I'm had that having planners and calendars and X. I've never done that before in my life. Man, I'm Xing off days. <laughs> yeah, it, it was <laughs> crazy. We'll be glad it's over. I, uh, I I go back to it was it was a weird camp, and I'll get into my experience, but I go back to the physicality and the, the knowledge that you guys had. Um, you know, when I talked about y'all going through four running backs, this is Quentin Griffin, Ronaldo Works. These aren't bad running backs at all. Right. I mean, we found out Q wasn't good in the eye. I mean, that that's how we found these things out because of y'all's defense. We had Larry Pinson was a huge running back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember Larry went in and I, I heard a hit that made me literally think about twice. <laughs> and then, you know, coaches are like, hey, JD, go in. You're like, oh, shit, you know, <laughs> damn, all right, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I, I go back to those things and I, I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on the defense again. Y'all were a lot of 4 3, some, uh, you know, you get into dime you get into nickel get into dime as well now everybody's three four talk about dbs and three four how do you feel about that part i mean me playing in cleveland i kind of really got to see a three four defense and it's, it's all starts up front like you gotta have a great nose tackle mm -hmm. and that's one thing that we have to try to find here as well but i feel like on the back end if you're not getting enough pressure it's not gonna hold up on the back end regardless so it's like different zones different levels so every level if you're not getting pressure they're gonna have they're gonna pick in spots and and we're good at that. Even our offense is good at that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out like our defense is gonna get our offense. That's kind of one of the things we're like, man, that speed, getting to the ball, getting to the huddle, like no time to rest. And so I can see where Nick Saban complains about playing against Oklahoma mm -hmm. deep offense because you don't get a chance to, to substitute or rest. But be on the back end, you gotta be ready to run and be ready to cover and cover for a long time now. And people don't realize that. People blame it on. I remember years ago they blame it on the corners and stuff. Yes, we may play soft. We may play nine yards off, but that's what we play when I play too. We play nine yards off, heel to heel on nine, and you just kind of wait. But I knew have people in front of me that's going to get to the ball. So it was one of the things where I, didn't, I never really questioned our front seven. I'll tell you one of the but, things that that has really changed in in college football, and I mean I understand it, but if you go back to whenever we whenever we played used to the best athletes on the field played corner. corner yeah. Very true. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Antonio, it was wide, could have played wide receiver, sure. could have played offense, corner. Yep. Andre Wolfo, mm -hmm. they took him off. He was a great wide receiver. They took him off of offense to play defense mm -hmm. at corner. It was a first-round pick at corner. Mm -hmm. So you always took your best athletes and put them at corner. Mm -hmm. Now they put them all at wide receiver. No joke. And – 
you know, so uh, immediately the defense has less talent than it used to because they're taking those guys and putting them on offense, and you're already, not to mention all the other things that they've added in offensively, you know, that, that make it difficult to, to, to play defense with the quarterback run game and some of the RPO, the run pass option stuff. Just the personnel has changed big time. I mean, yeah. See what they're doing is they're trying to shift it to where offense sells tickets, defense win championships. So they, they want you want to see a good offense. You want to see mm-hmm. a great defense. Mm-hmm. That's a boring game. Zero to zero, three to zero, going to fourth quarter. People want to see people score. And so I think that's where it's yeah. going to now. Which I mean, Wolf, what was he? He was six three, every bit of six oh, yeah. three, maybe more. He's a forty inch vertical guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super three, explosive. He could, could tackle. Power clean 365 yeah. or something crazy. Yeah, I mean, dude, just in, you know? an incredible athlete. And there's no way he'd be playing corner today at Oklahoma. There is no way they put true. him at corner. That'd be like all of a sudden Lincoln Riley coming up to his – his, uh, you know, press conference this summer and be like, eh, a couple of things, we're moving uh, C.D. Lamb over to corner and yada, yada, yada. And <laughs> no one would even, like, think twice in 2000. Like, okay, that's a great move. Get a good athlete out there on defense. But now it'd be like, you're doing what? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just – it's it's interesting how, how just the dynamic has changed. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. The offense sells tickets. I mean – that's what guys want to play, you know. That's, that's there's a lot of money in it. Line, uh, linebackers in three four, would it have been similar for you? What's the difference? Is what do you think about it? Well, I mean, so when you when you talk about a three four, the NFL three four that he's talking about is different than what we see in college, especially in the Big Twelve. Like a three four in in NFL, some men. Oh my God, you got like. Your, your inside backers have to play on, on guards that are uncovered, right? So those inside backers are all like 255 pounds, I mean giants, right? And the outside guys have to be able to anchor against a uh, an offensive tackle or a big H-back or blocking tight end. So your outside backer is like – 275, yes. 280. Six foot four, <laughs> yeah. six foot five, yeah. arms down to his knees yeah. that yeah. can you can, can stretch, can rush the passer. So that's a little bit different feel than what you have in college. In college, you've got like there's a bunch of hybrid guys. So you've got Absolutely. three three down linemen, and then you've got a hybrid <laughs> rush outside like backer like outside type. backer sometimes a, a, like Eric Stryker's a, a hybrid backer safety type of guy that mm-hmm. plays that up on the line of scrimmage so it's a different deal you know I I I personally I'm not a fan of the the three man front cuz what you end up doing is you get you get three down linemen that are head up on a center head up on tackles and four eyes and then trying to get to an edge and rush. If you ask any offensive lineman anywhere, they want a guy head up, yeah, right? No. You can't get to an edge whenever you're head up. So I think it slows the rush down. I think um, some of the stuff, because they try and be multiple up front. So you'll drop your rush edge and add the sandbacker or the nickel on the other side to get to your four-man rush, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you're dropping off a guy that rushes the passer and adding – a guy that's supposed to be a cover, cover guy, yeah. and I don't, I don't like the trade off. But you know, it's 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 where the game's gone, and and that's what you're seeing from from a bunch of different people. And you know, I, I I'm a I'm a believer in one like you have to have one call that you can run nonstop mm-hmm. whenever you need to stop. If it's mm-hmm. fourth quarter. Uh, you've got to get off the field. Let's go to our bread and butter. And it's not something special, right? It's mm-hmm. when we play. What? How many times did we run over dime pirate five? Oh man, that's, that, that was, that was every, every time. Every eighty percent of the snaps. <laughs> a million times. I'm trying to figure out how do we dominate playing cover five, cover five, cover two. Well, you know, I, that call. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, number one is we had a nickel Roy Williams that was a linebacker, a safety, yeah. uh, everything that's, all wrapped up into cool. one. So we could play nickel. Mm-hmm. Like Oklahoma is one of the first places that played nickel to everything. We yeah. played it to every personnel Tampa grouping. Too, yeah. So, I mean, some a lot of that stuff you just they don't they don't do it very much anymore. Yeah. All right, and I want to break it up, but everybody, man, this has been awesome so far. So appreciate y'all coming in. But uh, you guys have epic plays. Uh, you know, obviously the UCLA returns the touchdown from Superman play against Texas. What's your second favorite play, Bert? Man, my second favorite if play. You can't pick the touchdowns from UCLA. That's all I can really think of. Cause yeah. like, man, punt return was my one of my favorite thing to do because 
everyone's watching you, you're out there on an the island by yourself. And back then, we didn't have targeting. So even if I fair caught the ball, I still got hit. So I was like, why fair catch? So I just took the hits. My two, my two favorite, I'll tell you. Uh, sorry, to hit, but my two favorite was your pick against uh, Alabama in the first uh, was the first series. You first sat, played on, a game. sat on that yeah. comeback. That was a great play. And then your touchdown against Washington State. I thought that was a great one. The punt return against Washington State was a great play. Just got the ball rolling, and it was over. I love those. Yeah. When you watch him on those punt returns, it's amazing to me that he made a couple of cuts and – he knows it's a touchdown. No one else knows it. I mean, he knows how fast he's going, but he's like half speed, you know, just kind of striding now. And you can see guys trying as fa- as hard as they can to catch up and like losing ground. It's over. It's over. I mean, that stride covering like, um, it, it's, it's amazing. But that, it was fun. I'm telling you that against UCLA, um, Dan Cody, I, I don't remember if he was in on that one, but when we were in punt safe, it was you got to go back and watch some punt safes and watch Dan Cody over there on the edge. I mean, he would cave the entire side down, mm-hmm. and because the the wing would be begging for help from the tackle, and he just cave that whole side down, and and that would leave a whole wing of that the, of the field wide open because uh, he was going. He was. I mean, he wasn't trying to punt it. the The coaching point was take the wing and bury him as far back as he could. And he would bring it on that on the punt safe. It was See, fun people to watch. don't realize punt safe was, was the, my job on punt safe was just a fair catch the ball or, or just catch the ball. I mean, I wasn't supposed to get yardage or try to score or anything, but it's like when you catch the ball and no one's around you, like, well, okay, what I mean, I'm, I'm, why fair catch it? Yeah. I'm like, I don't see anybody in the screen because we have like Tommy Harris, JJ, Dan, Teddy. We got these defense guys. They're on the field just to make sure they don't do a, a fake punt. That's what, we're, that's what the goal is. And yeah. so you see me catch the ball, I'm like, well, dang, look at all this green grass. So that's why I took pride in that because I felt like these guys were out there three downs, four downs, five downs, giving their all. And then I go back and catch a punt. I'm tired too. It's like they're tired. But then we got a chance to score. I mean, we're celebrating with them meant more to me than anything. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things is back then, and there's some teams that still do it, but Bob's philosophy because we were a defense and special teams. Yeah, that's absolutely. that's what we you know prided our our team on. We had good offenses too. Not not to say anything mm-hmm. bad about that, but it was it was about playing great defense and winning special teams. Yeah. You went to the three phases. So yep. all the starters played special teams, absolutely. right? So mm-hmm. the punt safe team is almost the same personnel as the punt return team. Yep, yep, yep. So you you got guys out there that, you know, still still took pride in, in getting a good return, even and, though it was punt it was safe. There times where I, I begged these straight. I said, man, I know you're tired, man. I need yeah. you on the field right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I knew if I had these straight on the field, I know I, I that side of the field I'm not going to look at when the ball's in the air. So that's one less thing I got to worry about. And so these straight, his man was never in a picture. If, if you ever look, never in a picture. So I'm like, man, come on, stay on the field one more play. Yep. Man, I it it reminds me of the Alabama game at home, and so what would that have been two thousand two, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, it was two thirty kick, and it was like a hundred degrees that day. It was mm-hmm. brutal, and you know we've been on the field for whatever reason we could we were having trouble getting off the field in the second half, and so I told Coach V because I was a personal protector on punt. Yep. I told Coach V I said let me get one off. One one punt return or one punt off, and he's like, "No." I was like, "Come on, man! I'm I'm smoked right now." He's like, "Okay, one." Puts Garon out there. Mm-hmm. I'm standing on the sideline watching. I'm like, "Oh no!" Because there was a couple of return or uh, blocks that they had, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh no! This is." I hope he knows this alignment. They call it wrong. Pump blocked, like the ball's still on the field rolling around, and Coach Venables is running over <laughs> to me. You're never coming out again. I was like, oh my god. So that was the uh, <laughs> that's my special teams memory right yeah. there. There was a uh, th- the other thing about you know, Perk, you you were very knowledgeable about where where the return and coaching your guys up. You and Bob did a great job in special teams meetings of doing that, and I think it showed. You know, there was when you weren't in punt safe, we had three walk ons on uh, on punt return: Dan Dixon, Richard Richardson, and uh, Dan Townsend. I don't know if you remember yeah. all that, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. but I mean that's great development by Bob to find mm-hmm. those guys mm-hmm. that when you you either a starter or you're busting your ass out there and guys that you. You know the uh, not Shelby, but D straight block punts. Uh, Jason Carter block punts. I mean, you had a lot of guys that were in there doing that. And then uh, Teddy, I want to get your uh, thoughts on the uh, do, do, was did we do te- second and third favorite plays for you? Um, 
second, third favorite play. I guess for me, so uh, like I was saying earlier, as a freshman, I was terrible. Um, <laughs> I mean, I came into I came into it's like it wasn't even the same sport that I played in high school. I was mm-hmm. like, I don't, I don't, I have no idea what this terminology is. I just I wasn't very prepared, and even my sophomore year, um, I started at Mike uh, with Ro- Rocky was the Will, uh, Brandon Moore was the Sam. Uh, that was my sophomore year, and total garbage uh the beginning of the year i was i was awful but by the end of the year finally i started to come around a little bit after i got seven eight games under my belt and then we played um we played arkansas in the cotton bowl and uh i had a sack fumble to end the game and rocky recovered it that was his last play at oklahoma so for me that was that was kind of special because that for me it was like it was it's been a horrible year Mm -hmm. um I thought Coach Venables was going to kill me or cut me or or something, but finally to to have a, a game and kind of cap it off for a good moment was was a big confidence builder for me in my career. Man, you mentioned personal protector, and I got to give you some credit. I was your backup for two years, and I took a lot of pride in that. From fucking day one, Teddy, I just saw how controlled you had the punt team. And, I mean, I think that Alabama game was the only punch you had blocked in two years. I had one blocked at North Texas. North Texas, that was the other one. Okay, so I should have known, but there was a— <laughs> And I got ripped by Bob in front of the entire team. It happened. <laughs> and you yeah. sat right by him in meetings every day. I sat right behind you and just had to learn, just grasp every little thing. But again, I go back to, and that, those were some of those leadership things that we saw in you guys of like, get your shit together. Like, if you're going to be like me and be an All-American, this is what you do. You sit right, you sat right next to Bob, too. It was yeah. both of y'all just right there. Well, you, well, you, you don't, you don't know what I went through yeah. when I first got W. I had to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner in front of them every <laughs> meal. Smitty, go get my meal. I had to come make sure you're gaining weight. Yep. Then I had a lift with, with you guys, Tommy, JJ, Dan, Teddy. All right, big dog. I'm not changing his weight. You got to get his weight up. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, look, I'm 160 pounds, soaking wet. Well, uh, let me. I I can't take credit for any of that. I wish I could, but um, and and this is why I think it was so special at Oklahoma during that time is anything that I learned and applied to any of the younger guys was the same thing for me. Like at Personal Protector, I learned all of that from Seth Luttrell. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the head coach at North Texas. Now he was a personal protector um, whenever I was a freshman. I was I was out there, on, I played tackle on the punt team, but Seth was a personal protector. And then my sophomore year, I, I, I transitioned to personal protector and Seth was a, a GA mm-hmm. and he's the one that worked with me uh, on my technique. Cause I'd never blocked before. Yeah. And basically, you know, at full, mm-hmm. it's basically Absolutely. the same thing at fullback. No you know, you got to step up there and kind of take the guy on. It was a new world for me. So I learned all that from Seth the trail. And, you know, you just, you take that leadership from them, you do it like they did it, and the young guys do it like you did it. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing at linebacker. I, everything that I did at linebacker, I got from Rocky, you know, and you just pass it on down the line, and Rufus picked up there, and, you know, it just continues. I think of, you mentioned the Alabama game, and I hope Coach Stoops don't watch this, but that was – probably the most fucked up special teams meeting we had the week after that home because they blocked they onside of the first kickoff yep. they uh, blocked a punt for a touchdown they faked a field goal for a touchdown they high onsided the one and I gotta thank you for that one because when you dropped it they bench Smokey Hurst so oh, I got dude. to be on kick I'm returned <laughs> who, who, who's behind Smokey JD so, put his ass in <laughs> I try and fair catch it and I get smacked from behind by Smokey that was a bad deal um, but the, the not only was the special teams meetings the worst, that was the worst defensive meetings. Because I don't know, I'm sure you guys in the DB room. So, what was happening in the second half while they made the comeback, we couldn't get off the field. They Scott just Williams and Brody. Well, they started lining up in 22 personnel, and they were just running power. They got to it on a short yardage, right? And so they line up in 22, and they run power. Well, they get like six yards, right? So they just line right back up in it and run the same thing. And they ran it all the way down the field, mm-hmm. right? And we couldn't, we didn't know what was going on. Everyone's fitting their gaps. And we finally figure out like two series later that Eric Bassey's lining up on the wrong side in the 22 mm-hmm. per. So everyone's spilling it, fitting it perfectly. There. No one's home. No one's there. And it, it, that film after that <laughs> game, like we won it, but 
mentally we did not win that yeah. game. <laughs> that, that's that's a good uh, entryway into our next one. Uh, talk about you know you had uh, Mike, you had BV, your relationship with them, what it was like to be coached by either one of them. Man, that dude would give you the world if you asked him to. So uh, I, I love having Mike Stevens my coach. He made me to a man I am today because without him, people don't understand that co coaching is hard and being a player is harder. But having Mike dog cuss you, I remember one day coming out of spring game. You fucking embarrass me. You fucking embarrass your family, my family. I said, well, damn, Mike. I'm like, it's just a spring game. It's not even the fucking game. It's not going to win loss. Yeah, so, I mean, to just have someone that passionate and care about you that much, I don't care what the, the newer players said about him, man. He never did it wrong by me. He pushed me to play harder and play hard for him. So, I, I had my hat, tip my hat off to him. Yeah. Mike's, Mike was crazy. Yeah. Whenever I was I like, did he recruit you? Is that who you talked to? Kill Gunner recruited me. But did you talk to Mike? I uh, talked to Mike. I, well, no, I came as a receiver. That's so, right. So, yeah, well, I had Coach Spurrier. Well, I talked to Mike a couple of times, you know, just because he was D.C. or whatever and met him at, you know, coming to games and everything. And he's just he's he's so friendly and so personable. And I was like, man, this is going to be so awesome. <laughs> and then I told you that day I met BV, mm -hmm. all right? And then later that day, they had a seven-on-seven. Seven, and BV's like, just just go to the seven-on-seven seven and just watch, you know? We'll just stand there with the guys and just watch. And then you can, you, you know, you get in and, and start working and you can, you can get out there. And I'm standing there and the seven-on-seven's seven, going good, it's going fine. And then we're done and the guys are walking off there on the game field. Mm -hmm. And they're walking off, and Mike walks out on the field and starts ripping into some of the guys. I don't yeah. know if they missed class or what it was. And I was like, oh, I was like, whoa. Because in my life, I had never seen anyone get ripped by a coach like that. I was like, Man. who is that guy? That is not the same dude. I spent so much time in BV's office confiding in him. <laughs> like, Man, coach, I can't, I can't do this. I can't make it. I like, but, I mean, we all felt that way. But I mean, there were times where we were in meeting room, Eric Bassey and Mike Stu's about to fight. Mike Stu's tell somebody, somebody kick his ass. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and so, I mean, but we all would give our all for him because he gave us all to us and made sure he coached us hard and we played hard for him. Man, I just, I go back to the ultimate competitors. I got to hear, you know, the old team meeting room we had was split and they had that door that they would mm -hmm. slide. And I mean, you know, I would hear y'all in there watching film and I just remember, you know, sometimes it would be funny stories. You know, he'd, you know, y'all be watching 2001. God damn, this 2001 defense, I only think I love more than my wife and kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you hear yeah. some shit like that or then, you know, uh, you know, somebody, and you, I, I give y'all credit because y'all were militant on how y'all answered questions back and forth with them. BV, the board that he had in his room had so many questions on them and and stuff like that. Um, it just it, it was it was incredible. They 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 are one of a kind coaches. They really oh, are. Absolutely. I mean, so I mean, what about when you had those Saturday morning? You got those meetings before and they they asked you to play. What play? They, oh that, yeah, the final oh, test. Yeah, that they test. Well, that yeah. test. See, y'all test seemed a little easier oh, than yeah, ours. Absolutely. Was. See, see, ours. We were like we had like three or four, five, six pages, and you never know what question you're gonna ask you. So you're like, yeah. I thought like I was really in a real uh, classroom yeah. setting yeah. in school, like. <laughs> Shit. Our coach was uh, please don't ask this question. I remember they seeing guys get it right. They wanted y'all to get it wrong. Dude, <laughs> I, dude you, just the look on some guys' faces yeah. we whenever, were in. whenever that, that meeting was going on, everyone's like scanning their yeah. notes and like look, have a little cheat sheet written our, down. On our side, yeah. And uh, I, it's just whenever they ask you a question, it, he's like two words into it and you either know if you got it yeah. or you don't. You know what I'm saying? And, and whenever you can get it, it's it's like the biggest feeling of relief. Like, I don't even care about the game. I'm about, I'm about to kick ass this game. I, I, I know I'm performing well. If <laughs> I could just get this question right, yeah. because you're right there in front of everyone, yeah. man. It's the crucible for I sure. Think I, was more, I was more nervous about the questions or the tests than I was about the game. Well, I know both of y'all's knowledge of the game. I know I could take y'all out there to my chalkboard. I could say right return perk. You would draw it up. <laughs> I could say what's red double solid. Teddy would draw it up. What's orange. Speaking of that, you, you all both have legendary plays on special teams. UCLA, you have the fake punt against Bamlet. You called that. That was awesome. Mike T, uh, talk about that, uh, what went into that uh, for UC UCLA. Talk about what went into that for Bamlet. I, mean, I think just for myself was I started getting more comfortable with my trusting my guys on the field, like the gunners. The gunners were one thing that that's the first thing. When the ball kicked in the air, I look at the gunners first and I look at the, locate the ball again. But other than that, I don't know what, what's the gunner taken care of. I have the, the goal was a returner is to make at least one or two people miss. If you do that, you should be able to score every time. It's always be one guy free. Mm -hmm. So my job was to make that one guy miss. 
And so I, I hung my hat, took pride in that because I'm like, you know, this one time I get to catch the ball, touch the ball. I'm not fair catching shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to score this. And so I remember Bob used to get mad at me because he'd be like, Per, you can leave the nation and re return yardage, and average, and all this stuff. I'm like, man, just fair catch some time. I'm like, no, this is when this is my time to shine. I want the ball in my hands. So I felt like by me doing that, the 10 other guys took pride in that. If you notice, all the blocks are held up longer. You see these guys going down the field blocking, like, like I said, Dan Townsend or Richard Riston, something like that. They're blocking 80 yards down the field still. Off the pitcher, still blocking yeah. people to the into their bench. Yeah. So I mean, those guys took pride. So that make you go harder for them as well. So. One of the cool things about watching him return punts is, and a lot of guys never really got the knack for this, because I mean, it takes courage to stand back there, especially yeah. then, whenever yeah. it, you know you didn't have the targeting <laughs> stuff to stare up in the sky and know there's ten dudes bearing down on you. But Perk was great at. It's not just – you don't just catch the ball and r right return. Right. You have to set up your blocks okay. and help your guys that are coming down that are trailing. So he'd catch it and give just a little hop to one side. Those guys will adjust a little bit, and his blockers can hook up and, and make those blocks. So just there's little nuanced stuff like that in there that you just don't pick up, you know, whenever you're watching on TV or something. But just little things like that make a make a big difference, and he was always awesome at it. I go back to man, Bob just did a great job evaluating because your ass just did not get on punt return by right. accident, you know. Uh, Teddy, I believe the play call was called purple. Talk to people about what uh, went into it. Uh, did you trust Ferg to throw it? Uh, Mike T should have made Shad miss and score, but it happens. Right. Legendary play anyway. No, it was it was a cool play, you know, and that was a Bob play, you know. They. Um, they were running a, you know, they doubled the gunners quite a bit. And then they had a um, a return where they would just, they'd bring a gunner. And well, we knew by the alignment with that they were going to bring a blitz off that one side really hard. And they really didn't have anyone to cover for it. Usually you got to have kind of someone covering a little bit whenever you're bringing an all-out blitz. And um, that's it. Mike T just acted like he was, he'd kicked out a little, acting like maybe he just got too much width and just let the guy run right past him. I would let the guy off the tackle run past. And, uh, and there it is. Just turn around a little pop pass there and try and get some guys out in front. Um, it was perfectly executed. So, and that's the thing, dude. Early on, Bob ran a bunch of fakes. Oh, yeah. That one in Missouri to Chris Chester, the well, fake field goal. Well, I don't know, and this is before you got there, but and it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm looking at this number 11 right here. So a lot of people don't know this story. The reason I have number 11 is, you remember the orange, the fake, oh, so the ninja? It, so you can yeah. be eligible. Wow. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. So at the time, our backup quarterback was Hunter Wall. Hunter Wall. Yep. Yep. He was number 11. Okay, so we had a return that they had been practicing forever. Was a double throwback mm -hmm. screen. We ran it against K, K State. They had Ninja three guys over here. Yeah. All right, and uh, Hunter Wall came in as eleven for me. So they don't know that there's a quarterback there, right? So they snap it to him. He fires it out here. Who was it? Savage. I can't remember who it was. Savage, so. and because they had. <laughs> Like two years before in 99, they ran the same thing, but it was just a a, a, a play to him and he was going to go upfield. So they knew K-State had been studying that, so they give him the same deal, snap it here, throw it out there. They pursue like crazy over there. He like makes a couple of moves. We set up a throwback screen to Hunter Wall over here and touchdown. Mm -hmm. But that's why BV came to me in the offseason because I was 54 my freshman year mm -hmm, yeah. and I was moving to personal protector and he asked me to wear 11. And I was like, 11? So that's know, the I, best number there? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's that's what that was. And and that play worked to perfection. Touchdown in a game we needed it because yeah, yeah. we didn't play good defensively. But you just you mentioned it, Bob, and then we're just ahead of their time on things that they would see. I don't know, y'all y'all may remember this or not. We had a uh, an onside kick. We were supposed to run the first play against Texas. And it was Trey DiCarlo. He could run up and act like he was kicking it normal. And we would mm -hmm. put Brandon Jones out at the one. Mm -hmm. And BJ would run about six yards down. And Trey would kick the ball. If it was right here, he would kick it, it like top that. Spin. And it would top spin right at six yards yeah. and drop right over to BJ. And he'd catch it two yards. I mean, just little shit like that. Most coaches, I would imagine, mm -hmm. don't think of shit like right. that during practice, you know, and actually run it and execute it. Man, you know? I was say, sometimes I felt like we practiced special teams harder than we did defense or oh, offense. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it was live. Well, I mean, the, we had the 
Uh, how many kicks did Wolf block on the field goal block with oh, the middle jumper? Oh, a lot, yeah. Tons. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Sh- Schmitty story. Funny story. I think I told you mine about... <laughs> None of them are funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I get my greatest thing about Smitty. Yeah. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, you, you work out now? I said, absolutely not. I said, he, took, he took all that out of me. I don't I don't care to work out. I don't care to see anything with a whistle or a field or anything because of Smitty. But, man, I just remember him. I remember guys having to be working his group. You're always the last one into the weight room, last one out. So I'm like, I'm sitting there watching guys there, getting water breaks, getting, what are we doing next? I'm out there, let's go, full sprint. I'm full sprint from the weight room right till, we're, till we gotta go to run. I'm like, shit, I'm not mentally prepared to run this. What are we doing? Okay. It's one of those things, you used to rush, like <laughs> rush through a workout Guys would go as yeah. fast as they could just so you had time to get your shoes on comfortably yeah. before yeah. you went out and no sprinted. Joke. If you don't get your shoes on in time, you're done. But if you ask Smitty's rack, though, you know you're going to be the last one. Oh, you're out of off there. the rack. It's so, over. There. It's over. No so rest. Just plan on coming back. Only thing I knew I could do successfully was the shuttles. I'm like, okay, give me, I don't care if my legs are dead, if I'm squatting, I can do those shuttles. So yeah. I wouldn't worry about that. What was your least favorite? And my least favorite was pulling that sled up that hill. Man, yeah. that, hill that hill made a man of you. You got to pull it up and down. Like, I want to just stop. I mean, it's. Look, look at the hill now. I was like, that hill ain't shit. But then I'm like, people say, that, that's a small hill. Okay, you get down there and go, hand down, go. Pounds, you see how, how, how <laughs> thick that hill is? That's a mountain. <laughs> shit. I remember you, uh, I remember uh, on the, the hill, because it was before they went, after they redid the track, they kind of changed it and, yeah. and leveled it out a, real, a little bit. It was terrible before, but uh, you remember when Rocky fought, uh, was it Barclay on the top, oh, of, the the top of the hill? Yeah. <laughs> after a workout oh, for not making awesome. times. Funny story, sweetie story. Um, man, I don't know. I the the thing that I think is funny, and it's it may not be as is funny whenever you you tell the story unless unless you were there. But do you remember the leg press? In because they didn't they didn't have it later. The later they moved to the one that kind of swung, right? The one in the Switzer. Yeah, we did it when we first got there. But right, they had like the original like straight leg press, right? And so Schmitty would make you move the seat all the way forward. Mm-hmm. And then, so like when your knees would like come back and past your, head, your head, shoulders, ears, yeah. right? And there was way too much weight on there. And he would grab it on the side and push it down to make sure that you went all the way down. And it was just, it was the worst oh, thing. Cause guys yeah. like, cause you'd be like a set of like eight or, or 10 or something like that. And he would just bury you under the leg press machine on the first one, and it was the worst. So everyone yeah. would just kind of like, you'd like mull around, because there was two leg presses, and everyone would like mull around and fight to get onto mm-hmm. the leg press where Schmitty wasn't. <laughs> so there'd be a big group of guys over here, and he'd be plucking guys one after another. Last and, one. and whenever you got, because it, I mean, it would change the entire workout for you if you had to go on that leg press machine with Schmitty. Schmitty changes everything. The worst workout I had is resisting bands up the hill. And if you don't have a partner, Schmitty's your partner. And he pulls you back like he's fucking 500 pounds. (laughs) If he's your partner on med balls, it's the worst day of your life. (laughs) I mean, you're one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, you're counting as loud as you can. I mean, it's it's just, it's no joke. So, So, uh, uh, go ahead. Real real quickly, this is, it's just kind of funny, but it just speaks to the misery of the of the weight room. Schmitty, I think it was our sophomore year, he he pulled Dan Cody, me, and Gayron Allen into his work group. So that, that's who we worked with in, in the uh, the winter and the spring. So Gayron was 5'10", like 215 pounds, and was like a 600-pound squatter. Mm-hmm. So we used his weight on the squat. Oh, yeah. Okay, so everyone had to use the same weight, yeah, right? right? right. Even though he can squat yeah. 200 pounds more right. than Dan and I, we had to use his weight on the squat. Uh, I could bench more than both those guys by quite a bit, mm-hmm. but we had to use my weight on the bench. So those guys, it was a pure hell on upper body days. Dan could clean, clean. more yeah. than uh, me and Gayron. So no matter what, there was always something miserable. And by the time we were done, there was always like blood covering the bars and stuff from people's hands being destroyed. But that was like the worst for me ever because Gayron just buried us under the squat. Dan buried us under the clean. And it was just, 
it was constant misery. See, you were always saying. weight was always way too much than what you should have yeah, been. Yeah, I was using. saying earlier, like, gotta get it up, big dog. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. he put me in the hospital. I had, a, I had hemorrhoids in my internal <laughs> stomach lining. <laughs> like, damn, Smitty. So after you left, so I worked out with you your senior year. And then um, after you left, it was me and Dan. And, uh, you know, right where we worked out, that uh, we had that garage door mm -hmm. right by Smitty's deal. Well, the year after you left, there was a, a fire department right there. They moved the, the little fire station right, right there. Well, Smitty had run. And this shit's never been told, and y'all are gonna laugh at this. But there was, there may have been a player that had some issues, fainting or whatnot. And dog, it was like a movie. Schmitty hit that button, whistled, fire department looked out. Dudes came over with a little stroller, <laughs> rolled his ass out, pushed the damn button, and be right down. He was in and out in thirty seconds. <laughs> We were like, what the fuck just happened? Oh, my God. They took him right to that little fire station, got him right. Scott and him met him right over there. Oh, it's man, like the just... uh, it's like the soccer, you know, when they have yes. those guys <laughs> running them off the field in the soccer stretcher. It's like, exactly. Oh, man, exactly. Uh, current staff, how much have you met them? There's a couple more questions of this. We'll go to the Twitter questions. But uh, have you met the current staff, Perk? What do you think of well, them? Well, I haven't met a lot of current staff, but I, I met Coach Riley, and he kind of surprised me because coming down tunnel one day before a game, he's coming up, going to the locker room before the game starts. He's like, hey, Park. I said, I'm looking around like, he, he know me? He's like, yeah, I know you. You're my favorite players to watch. I was like, so I felt, I felt like I accomplished something. Like, man, this he this guy knows me. He That's actually sure. knows what I've done and what I did for the program. So that kind of meant a lot to me. Nobody closer to the staff than you, Teddy. What do you, what do you think about him? Man, I, I like all the guys there. You know, Kale's still there. He's been fantastic forever. Uh, I think Bill Beanbow's the best offensive line coach in the country. Um, you know, obviously Lincoln is is unbelievable. Like just like Perk said, he's he's great with all the former guys, and um, you know knows everyone. is is very giving of his time, and Absolutely. even though he's a super uh, busy man, so I, uh, offensively they're great. I love the new defensive staff. Um, you know, I I love Mike and everything that he did here. But I, I, I was happy to that is, you know, I think it just needed a change. I think Mike needed a change. Mm -hmm. I think we needed a change. Uh, didn't want to see him go, but at the same time, excited for the future. Grinch is, he's a great dude. He's kind of cut from the same mm -hmm. cloth. Um, he played in the same era that we did and, and, and kind of knows a lot of the same people. And Brian Odom is the linebacker coach. We came in with uh, me and Antonio and um, great guy. Great work ethic uh, has has really made his way up through the ranks really quickly. He started as a strength and conditioning coach. He was the head guy at Houston. Uh, he worked. He went with Mike and them out to Arizona and was mm -hmm. under Corey Edmond out there. Then he got the head job at Houston and um, decided to do the the coaching deal at Washington State with Grinch and then got the backer coach at Missouri and now he's here and it's it's happened really quick. Uh, so he's he's a big up and comer and. Uh, Manning is great. Roy Manning's he's, awesome. he, he's a he's a fiery dude. In your face. Yeah. He can coach all the positions. Um great out on the recruiting trail. So man, I, and and Thibodeau, so glad that he was able to to keep that spot because oh, you know, there, there's a there's a good tie into the past with him and, mm -hmm. and he's still a good guy out on the recruiting trail and I think he likes what they're doing in this new defense too, so he's bought in. Talk to me about your NFL coaches. Uh, I, I met Coach Grinch and all them, and obviously Bo. Super happy for them. So best of luck. But uh, Perk, talk to me about your head coaches in the NFL, position coaches, uh, anybody after OU. Well, I had uh, Coach Romeo Cornell, and man, he had a complicated defense. <laughs> I could not quite get it. It was one of the things where you got like a hundred blitzes, four or five calls in one call. It was like you got to check this and that. I'm like, oh my god. So like I said, it went back to me being prepared by Brent Venables and Mike Stoops that they'll tell you everything you need to know this NFL is way different so you gotta you gotta you're a man this is your full-time job so you gotta know what you're supposed to do on your own so that was a big change for me but I mean I had great coaches it's just one of the things where I couldn't adapt quick enough and injuries led to one thing yep. Teddy NFL coaches uh man I feel like I was really lucky in the NFL um to play for some of the defensive coaches that I did. Unfortunately, I never played anywhere that had a quarterback, uh, yeah, which is yeah. tough because you don't win any games in the NFL if you don't have quarterbacks. But um, 
my rookie year, I was with uh, Dick Geron was my defensive coordinator. Uh, great guy, great guy. He was at Chicago for a while and then um, took over as defensive coordinator at, at Detroit. We were top five defense both both years under him, and then he got the head job in Buffalo. Um, and then uh, and Richard Smith was my uh, linebacker coach, who was fantastic. Um, I hated him at the time. Uh, he made my life a living hell as a as a rookie, but it made me a lot better in the long run. Um, then I got to play in the Tampa scheme. Um, Jerron was kind of a hybrid between some Tampa uh, stuff, but then I got to I got to play for Rod Marinelli, and it was it was a it was a different world. And I got to play in the the real Tampa scheme from the guys that that invented it and coached it all along. So that was awesome. Um, you know, he he was he was a he's a great man, first of all, above everything else, but a great football coach too. So that was great. And then um, Fossil, uh, yeah, I, I, Jim Fossil in the U uh, was my coach, but in Tampa, I got to play for Monty Kiffin. Oh yeah, uh, Tampa scheme there with Monty in in Tampa Bay, and my linebacker coach was Gus Bradley, uh, who went to Seattle, and they were starting to tinkle tinker with some of the Seattle stuff there at Tampa Bay before he went up there. Uh, and then he got, he, you know, had the head coaching job there at, at Jacksonville, but um, he was great. And then I went to Jacksonville and Jack Del Rio was the uh, head coach and ton of respect for him. He was a favorite of mine growing up as a kid. Uh, he's a great coach. And my defensive coordinator is Mel Tucker. I had Mel Tucker too. Yeah, who, who went to Georgia and – yeah, he was great, and um, uh, um, I'm trying to think who my um, oh gosh, I'm I'm blanking on my my linebacker coach, but he's now the defensive coordinator at Carolina. So they with Rivera. Yeah, I, I was I was lucky to I, I was around a lot of guys that knew a ton about. Oh, and when I was in Buffalo. Perry Fuel was my defensive coordinator, and he is the one right after that that started doing all the stuff with the New York Giants whenever they had their run uh, on defense and played really good. So I was really lucky. Played for a bunch of really kind of legendary defensive coaches. If you think of it, my producer Brad Reed does a great job. Just think of the name. We'll pop it up on yeah. the screen with him. Uh, but Perk, uh, now we're going to go to the fan questions. At Mr. Underscore Crines, he's got to be from Lawton because he calls it the L. Okay? <laughs> he says, Perk, who are the top five athletes to come through the L? Any sport? Teddy uh, any good lake stories with teammates and then both of y'all who's the toughest matchup in Oklahoma drills man I'm gonna tell you just me watching and playing against them Jamal Brown one of the toughest players come through law man yes. I've never seen anyone single handedly destroy an offensive line by itself take their soul we had playing against MacArthur in high school our whole offensive line was scared of Jamal I'm like well, what's that scared, what's that scared him for so, Dude, that, I met yeah. Jamal yeah. at uh, OU camp before my senior year Right, Some and shit brought him up or something. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't practice, but he was just there. Giant, biggest man yeah. I ever seen in my life at the yeah. time. Had the shaved head, and I was like, dude, that must be an NFL guy yeah. coming back to you know one of the uh, former player. No, he's a high school kid. I was like, oh my god. Jamal was that big in high school. He dominated our the whole state of Oklahoma and the city of Lawton. So think about yeah. how crazy Lawton is. Jamal was a Outland winner. Uh, all pro defense tackle played offense long. yeah and he may not be the best offensive lineman right. from Lawton Will Shields, Will Shields. Will Shields. Will Shields. so that's I mean that's yeah, just you insane up, you up there too you got any more from Lawton or just those well um I always looked up to Mike Minner that was one of my mentors I always thought I was gonna go to Nebraska because of Mike Minner so that's one of the things we we're being from the same neighborhood he made it off the neighbor, out of the hood and so I'm like I want to follow his footsteps so that was one of my favorite players to watch growing up toughest matchup in Oklahoma drill then we'll go to Teddy See, I don't think we had a tough matchup because we, we matched up smart. We were strategic with our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> me, Mark Clayton, come on, Mark. Yeah, the arrangement. <laughs> yeah, the arrangement. <laughs> yeah, we had the arrangement. I'm going to throw you this way. You throw me this way. We you pretend go. we pin it. Yeah. Like, I mean, ah, yeah. Yeah. You let me win one, I'll, yeah. I'll let you win one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's just both try and look good like it's yeah. a good, good matchup. I'm not going to go again and go again. So, so I really didn't have any too, too crazy. Teddy probably does. Yeah. But, Teddy, I want to hear your top five uh, athletes from high school around your where you played. Lake stories with teammates, toughest matchup in Oklahoma Drew. I'm going to have to let the Lake stories. Uh, I, that's off-air stuff usually. Sure, uh, sure. But we did have some good times. Uh, we went we went to the lake 
JY, Donley, and a uh, big group of guys went right the summer right before we started the 2003 season. We had a lot of fun uh, out there. Um, top five high school guys that, you know, I, we played Weatherford in high school. And Wes Sims was grown man dominant. I mean, 320 pounds as a high school kid was incredibly strong. He was impressive. Um, Russell Dennison was impressive. Donnelly, all those guys. Um, I came to, I came to camp whenever uh, John Blake was still here. So it would have been right the summer before Bob came. Uh, so it would have been before my sophomore or before my junior year. And I saw some dudes at that camp that I was like, man, I am way behind where I need to be. And it was really motivating for me moving forward that I was like, you know, I've been able to get along at my small little school and and do good. But if I want to get up to the the big time, I better pick up my game. And I saw a dude there. So Rex Ryan was the linebacker coach and he did the linebacker drills. And there was a dude there from Douglas uh, I think he was from Douglas, Cocaine Mothershed. Oh, yeah. and Amazing athlete. He was unbelievable <clears throat> in these drills. I mean, he was – I was like, dude, that's a high school linebacker. I can't believe this. So that was pretty uh, pretty motivating for me moving forward that I knew I had to had to get my game right. I actually talked to Greg Richmond, one of his teammates. Uh, he coaches at OSU uh, yesterday. But I want to get your toughest matchup in Oklahoma, Drew. You know, it for me, it was, it was tough because – I had to go, BV made me go against linemen, and my hardest one was when I had to go against Davin Joseph. (laughs) Rufus said the exact same thing. Oh, man. (laughs) That's the strong, Uh, go ahead. No, I mean, he's just, he's so strong. He was a wrestler, so he he knew about getting low. He had incredibly long arms, so he was was a monster in the Oklahoma drill. He was made for it. arms. That's Huge all. punch, just it's all arms and forehead. That's yeah, all there was. Yeah. It, it was it was hard to get past him, man. So we think about them saying they're going to try to end Oklahoma drill. I think they'll still do variations of it. I mean, me coaching now, uh, Park, I'm, we're still going to do it. I mean, we, you know, we're not going to do it the same way that you know we used to. But I mean, to me, Park, it's it's safety. I used to when when I wasn't playing and had a son. You know, I was on this. I ain't gonna let him play. I ain't gonna let him. It, ain't nobody bringing smoke like that at eight years old. Yeah. Okay, you know, and if you teach them right, hey, no. I'm not going to truck you. You don't come hit me low or hit me in the head. And, yeah. and a lot of it, I think, at that age, cat and mouse is really good yeah. for their footwork, keeping their feet underneath them. So I'm, 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 I'm on the bus of they. In my opinion, I want to keep football somewhat physical and yeah. keep it the way it is. And so I think that safety is is what they need first. Well, that's yeah. my opinion. What What gets me is I saw. I guess I don't know if it was a SEC coaches convention or what, but they someone had a list of all. They asked all the coaches in the SEC what they thought about the Oklahoma drill. And one after another, I just don't know what we're teaching. I I don't know what we learned from it. Um, You know, it's, it's really just a barbaric drill. And I'm like, these guys are cowards, right? Because I know none of them believe that. They're saying that for recruiting purposes or or whatever because they don't believe that. If you think that's barbaric, it's a guy (laughs) blocking a guy and you try and get off and make a play. That's what football is. If you think Oklahoma drills barbaric, well, then you think bar- uh, football's barbaric. Yeah, so get out. Go do something else. There's 11 more doing that. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. more doing that same it, it thing. It makes yeah. me so mad yeah. that those guys would get in front of a microphone and say that. I yeah. think it's I think it's just cowardice of the highest order. I remember me, though. We try to line up. We try to get somebody the same strength as you. That's why I said mm-hmm. Mark Clay yeah. lay up. Come on, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> somebody so, pop up. We try to hear me get up there, too. Though. Listen, and, and when I was in Jacksonville, this is pretty cool. They – you know, for, for training camp, you know, in the NFL, a bunch of people coming to training camp, a bunch mm-hmm. of fans, they set up stands and they announce it in the paper the day before who the matchups are going to oh, be. Wow. So, I mean, it, it was awesome until you saw Mercedes Lewis whenever he was in his yeah. prime yeah. as a block and tight Six, end. Seven. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was a, he was a beast. But that was cool, and that wasn't very long ago, but I guess that's, that's going to be gone. Yeah. At J. George 64 Perk wants to know, in your opinion, was the 2003 team the most complete team of the last 20 years? Man, I would like to say that because I was part of the team and I contributed to some of the success, but uh, it's kind of hard to say, man, because like, I think – like Teddy said earlier, Coach Stoops, he taught 
all phases of the game. He's like, we're, you gotta, we're good. Then we're good on every phase, defense, offense, special teams. I remember Jay White coming to, st- to the sideline, hey, we need, we need to stop. Like, I'm going I'm to score you to stop. And so we're like, we're telling them, like, hey, we need y'all to stay on the field longer. So it's like, we all play together. We all, I mean, I think that we put the most points up and we had stopped yeah. the most uh, scoring against us. We had low scoring then too. So I think that that probably was the best all around talent I think I've ever seen. Yep. Well, hey, you remember you were talking about that Colorado game yeah. earlier. Um, th- that game they went on a because we were like you said we need you got to stay on the field longer. They went on an eighteen play mm-hmm. drive. They ran power like almost every yeah. single play to to run the clock out. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's he's exactly right. That was a team that that really played together in all phases. And, and I think I think another thing too is we all all of us guys were we're all good friends. I mean, most mm-hmm. of us to this day still are. So we hung out outside of football. We we go eat together, go party together. So it was one of the things where when that true saying we too deep. That's where it came from because we were we were deep. If you seen us in a, at a bar or a club or anywhere, you seen a hundred of us. You seen all of us together. Brother, regardless of what color, black, white, we're all together. So it was, we had a true brotherhood at the end. I remember that was the core too. That yeah. was the core that came in whenever Bob and them mm-hmm. first first yeah. got there. So that was kind of the the culmination of all their philosophies, the strength and conditioning philosophies, the the special teams. All of that finally piled into one, yeah. and all those guys had had finally had a full run of it. Yeah. I just remember it, fucking watching other offenses try and get a yard, two yards no more than three yards it's, there's three guys at every angle you, you know your running backs getting stopped before he even gets to the line of scrimmage having the cut i mean there were so many of those instances and uh i also watched it when when to me for me to answer the question i think yes just because but i also think it depends on when when you ask it during the season i was watching uh ruffin mcneil and i are pretty good friends he was the mm-hmm. d coordinator at uh, tech when we were there um but i was watching the uh the year Derek straight was uh, we had him in a uh, Oh three, and he had that return, the, the crazy. Yeah, he got the pick, and then yeah. he almost returns it all the way to the house. Um, after that play on the TV copy, um, one of the announcers there, I, I can't remember his name, but we'll have to play it on here. He's just he says, you know, we we came here to some something to the effect of we came here thinking that this team's the number one team in the country, and they're probably one of the best ever. And like not trying to jinx us, but if, if nothing happened, basically saying we didn't have to win that game to go to the national championship, not knowing the next week that Mike Stoops was going to leave, and yeah. you know things were going to happen so that was crazy but, about that game is that i think uh bj simmons was the quarterback mm-hmm. and he he said i think all the all-time passing records in that season mm-hmm. and King they think is us yeah they they threw for like 500 yards a game i don't know exactly what all the numbers yeah, were 360 against y'all 369 yeah. mm-hmm. and five interceptions five picks <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I mean, people yeah. like 300 yards. I mean, back then, if they're throwing it, that's 90 yards a, yeah, a quarter. Yeah, they're throwing 120 times yeah. a game. Yeah. Yeah. And we put up 55. But, uh, again, I just go back to that game. I just – if y'all were so good about – and this is why it hurts so much about K-State, and this is why I hurt so much about Mike. Mike used to say, you fucking Chuck, you better run that fucking football. Keep my guys off the field. By the first three series of the game, y'all had stopped them three times. We had scored at least once. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that was why I like that team so much. That defense just – your linebackers, y'all never really got touched, it seemed like. Tommy caused so much havoc. There, that play in Alabama where Tommy damn near takes the handoff from the quarterback. Oh, yeah. I mean, we ain't seen nothing like that, Teddy, in a while, man. So, I, I just I – if, if you look back, look back at it, too, though, I, th- I feel like everyone, our top seven, got drafted. I mean, I think J- uh, J.J. maybe the only one that didn't get drafted. I think our back four, you know, I know I came out with Brodney, myself, and Dante. We all got drafted. And then Eric Bassey a year later. And then, so I, mean, I feel like that if you – we played hurt. A lot of us played hurt. Because if you step off the field, then you might not come back to that position. You might not be able to start anymore. So right. we played hurt. So we were always right. too deep. So whether you're starter or you're secondary, second backup person, you had to play as if you were starting. And, and, and up front – there was a bunch of good rotational guys, oh, yeah, too. Man. Corey Best Klein. Line. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay, okay. Corey Klein was so good. Corey Klein. Um, Bobo. Uh, Bobo. I mean, there, there was a bunch of rotational guys. So, we had we had great starters, but there was also on that on that front unit, you know, because you got to have guys that can, can rotate in and, and, you know, and it just – Keep the pressure on that offensive line, and we do. We had had a bunch of really good players. At Wendy Avili wants to know, Perk, what was going through your mind after the third return versus UCLA? Teddy, how would you describe the atmosphere after you scored the TD versus Texas in 01? Well, I know the third return, 
Bob was like, okay, Perk, you just need seven or ten yards to, to get a record just for the most yards in the game. And then I caught it, and I was like, I looked up the sideline. I was like, well, shoot, I got, there's, no, there's no one there. So I didn't, I didn't know that I was getting a record for the most returns, return touchdowns in the game. I thought it was just for the most yards until I seen a jumbotron. They were like, give a shout out to Antonio Perkins, yeah. NCAA records. I was like, records? I thought I was getting one. That was but, loud. but yeah, so that's that's the thing that is something we didn't know. And I kind of felt like I could have probably scored more that game, but I was tired. And then, so it's a couple times where I look back at a film this year, leading up to UCLA game this past year. I'm like, man, I had a return. I could have scored right there, Absolutely. but I missed my hole. I missed my my cut. So it's those things you still look at to this day. Like, dang, I was this close to this, and it's, it's just crazy just to even have a feat like that. A year that record hasn't been broken in 37 years, and awesome. was able to accomplish that. And and the way the game is going now, you may not ever see some of our return two punt returns or even one. That's true. It's hard to see one return now. That's I'll good. tell you what I was thinking during those returns. I was like, man. That's really cool, but we're going right back, back out on defense. defense. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. <laughs> but it was the end of the game, so like, that's right. all I came with. Right. The game's out of, out, of, out of control, so we're going to go get a rest right. now. That's right. Yeah. But that's, that's one thing I was thinking, too, though. Like I had to get in really great shape because what teams started doing was, strategically, third down, third and long, they'll throw a deep ball to my side, yeah. knowing I got to go back to punt return. Mm -hmm. So I'm tired. I'm, 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 I'm going 70 yards downfield, chasing someone to make sure they don't score against me, and then next thing you know, I got to go back and catch a field of punt. So it was one of the things where conditioning had to be. It was, I mean, Smitty had some great shape, and yeah. I, I think I've never been that type of shape in my life. Yeah, yeah Teddy called it, it was that Alabama game the year before, uh, the year after you left the Oregon game that we played. It was so damn hot, but uh, we'll get into more of that. Teddy, uh, the TD against Texas Superman play. Um, the, with the atmosphere after it. Yeah, yeah. Um, How would you describe that atmosphere after you scored? <sighs> I mean, it, it, was, it was it's crazy because it's one of those things that happens so quick that, you know, for me, I personally feel like it's the biggest wasted opportunity for the greatest horns down in rivalry history. That's a great point. You know, so. I made up for it if you. Yeah, I, a I, bunch I of you. guys you, have you made up for it. Yeah, yeah, he won. There's been plenty of guys. So that's the, that's the first thing. Uh, I was pissed off that I didn't do the horns down. The second thing is I never – at the time, like I thought it was, wow, cool play. Uh, looks like we're going to win this game. Uh, pretty epic, but no way did I think it was going to be. You scoring it. Well, I, I didn't think it was going to be like. Game clinching. No, oh, like yeah. it would last for so long. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like here we are, yeah. however yeah. many years later, and it's still a big yeah. memory for, for a bunch though. of people. So that was a yeah. game breaker. It was. That was, that was so a clincher. Yeah. what pisses me off about that is I should have kept that ball. <laughs> You know, I, I I got tackled over there, and I think I either fell out of my hand or I tossed it to the Damn. to the rep. I should have you know, kept that ball. I think the same thing. That third touchdown at UCLA, I put the ball back at yeah. the first goal line. I'm should've like, why, why, why not keep that ball? <laughs> that's, that's cold, man. I get it though. You're right. Um, that's, that's why I got this room, man. I would have I kept as much as I could. At MV Sooner wants to know uh, what offensive player did you hate playing and which one did you own? Per man, I told people, I told you all the time that they asked me who I hate guarding, as far as a, a opponent. I said, man, my opponents were Mark Bradley, Mark Clayton, Brandon Jones, Will Peoples. I, I got more work at there. The game was easy to me. Guarding those guys was hard. Mm -hmm. Going to going to the football field, going to a game and playing against somebody else. Like Roy Williams from Texas, he was terrible. I mean, I hate to say that, but ah, it's all good. <laughs> he was terrible. Like guard Mark Clayton, those guys every day. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't case anybody better than him. So I, I feel like it was, it was practice every day was tough for me. Teddy, one player you hated playing, one player you owned. Please don't let me be the player you owned. I know you did. But <laughs> no, you no, no, no. It's no. my show and everything. Dude, I know you're saying that, but <laughs> everyone knows the dome you brought on the lead, right? No one wanted to go up against that. Um, I'm trying to think, player that I hated going up against. Maybe a fast guy? <sighs> like someone, like uh, a quarterback that scrambles around a lot, you know. Brad Smith um, type guy? Yeah, Brad Smith, I thought, he was he was tough, um, but we, we played him pretty Cynic, good. Cynic Wallace yeah, made tough one. yeah, see, and I was thinking about that too, but we played him great too, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? They got like 50 yards of offense on us. Um, man, I don't know that I don't know that any one player really stands out, but I would say anytime you have a quarterback that comes off schedule, tucks the ball, and starts to scramble around. That damn Reggie McNeil. I still have oh, about yeah. that shit. What about uh, the guy from K-State? Roberson? Or what was Robertson, it? Robertson? He, was he was a good one. Number three. Good one. Oh, yeah. that reminds me. Yeah. Sproles. Yeah, Sproles. There you I hated go. playing against Sproles. Perfect. I mean, he's, dude, he's the easiest guy to tackle if you get your hands on him. 
if you get your hands on him. That's the only thing. In the open field, he was insane. I remember the Big 12 championship game. I felt like it was a track meet. I had like, dang, I chase him down again. It's like, yeah. what's going on yeah. here? That was that was disappointing. Now, um, the the players that I the the one that I owned was I, anytime we played Texas, man, we used to kill their linebackers. Derek Johnson, Reed Boyd. We used to make sure you know we held it down for that. But I can't. I mean. Derek's a really good dude, and he played forever in the NFL. And I never would have thought that watching him cower away every time you, <laughs> when you went at him on the lead, and he would duck Don't you. What is career decisions? I he, never he seen. Any, that's why he yeah. played so long in the NFL. I yeah. guess. Um, I, I got to shout out Curtis, I, and I said this, and you weren't here, but uh, you know Curtis, uh, point of attack, that big those hips and mm-hmm. just uh, head. Horrible, Teddy. You were right behind him on point of attack, but Teddy used to kill me. I used to have this vendetta part, and he didn't know this, but and it, it wasn't anything bad. But I don't think Teddy knew how much like of my fucking life he <laughs> occupied my freshman year. Like I'm going into practice at night, and you know, like the first I mentioned the first day, I ran out for a flat route. I'm open. They don't throw it to me, and I just fucking get pushed and blah blah blah. And Teddy's like, you know, B- BV makes us do that. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. So I'm like, fuck, all right, next day I'm not going to do so. You know, I ran out to the flat and I'm turning around and shit, not going to let him do it. I'm like, all right, yeah, I got it. All right, I'm going to get this. Well, then, you know, one day I'd come up and uh, I'd come up and he'd fucking meet me in the hole. And I'm just like, how the fuck did you know I was about to? And he'd like, you didn't look around, you didn't scan or anything. So I figured it was going to be power one yeah. way or the other. And da, da, da. I'm like, all right, so next time I'm going to get up there. You know, I get up there and I scan around and I'm looking and, and then he doesn't come. And I'm like, how the fuck? How'd you know that? And he's like, well, you know, you see, yeah, exactly. You, you're making it too obvious. You got blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I'm going to get you one of these days, Teddy. I'm going to get you one of these days. Old, old coaching right yes, there. It, it was, man. But there was just these little challenges every fucking day. And I was just like, like, man, I can't get this dude. I can't get a, to a step faster than him. We'd run power pass. Well, you took your angle too far. I mean, yeah, you ran for the pass. He's ready for, you know, to pick it off. I'm like, how'd you? Well, you took your angle too far. You, see, you, you, you say that, though. That goes back to what I was talking about, BV and, and Mike Stoops. Those tendencies, they, they, they teach us that every day. Like, look at this. Look at that. And so we pick up the little things y'all do. Oh, and, and they were so competitive yeah. Yeah. that yeah. they wanted to, you know, they wanted yeah. to bring it against our offense oh, yeah. every day. So they were every coaching day. it up like it was the Super Bowl, every too. Day. So two more. Okay, it's been great. At Coach Brimmer wants to know, was there ever a time at OU that you thought, this isn't for me? And if so, how did you overcome it? Well, it early on in my career, I remember Mike Stoops sat me down. He was like, you too light in the ass. You'll never play <laughs> down in Big 12. You'll never play for me. And so that was one of the things where, I mean, I came from offense. I was a... Jim Thorpe Award winner, best player in Oklahoma coming out of, out of high school, receiver. And they, for him telling me that, my first, second, third year, I'm like, man, maybe, I, maybe it's not for me. Maybe I can't do this. So that right there kind of motivated me because if somebody says you can't do something, you always want to push yourself and, and figure out what you can do, what you can't accomplish. So by me doing that, being not only a good punt returner, a lot of people still remember me playing defense too. Sure. Like I, I was a pretty damn good cor- cover corner too. Absolutely. What people don't realize is that I covered the entire field. We had boundary corner, we had field corner, so mm-hmm. I had to go where yep. all the speed was. And so, it, looking at people now, like, why are they 10 yards off? Why are they aren't closer playing bump and run? It's, I mean, it's schemes and kind of hard to do all those things, but that, that, was, with, that was it, though. Mike Stoops kind of made me want to walk away from the game several times. Absolutely. Teddy, hard times, how'd you overcome it? I, I can tell you four distinct times where I – thought that this is not for me and I can't make it here. Uh, I told you the one about Torrance Marshall whenever I, I first walked up and saw that dude uh, as the as the guy I'm supposed to be backing up. It was like a like I was so excited to get there and get going. It was like it hit me like a ton of bricks like I'm never going to be that. Yeah, so right, I mean right. what am I doing here? Uh, and then the next day in my first summer workout with Schmitty and I, I you I can't we can we tell these stories all the time but you cannot put it into words what you feel like I was puking like the predator whenever he bleeds yeah. that yellow stuff <laughs> I was puking that out I don't know yeah. where it came from yeah, but I was puking yellow stuff and I thought I was gonna die so that's the second time the third time I thought this isn't for me was the the training camp the seventeen. Uh, straight two a days, yeah. padded every single practice. Ice baths weren't helping or working. Uh, getting, getting just dog cussed every day, not knowing the defense, not knowing what I'm doing. Um, that was the third. The fourth was my sophomore year, whenever I was finally starting, but I was horrible. 
And I think we were playing maybe A and M one week, and the whole team was practicing bad defensively. And it was just that week where the coaches were coaches were edgy and and just angry, and the player it was just it was a bad week of practice. And I wasn't doing very good, and BV was like killing me, and he finally grabs me during a practice and like pulls me close. He's like, "Do you even know why you're playing?" And I was like, because you don't have anyone else. And he's like, at least you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like threw me back out there. And like I, I made it through the I made it through the rest of practice. And I, I I just like remember sitting down at my locker afterwards, basically wanting to just like tear up and cry, but somehow made it through. I don't know how. Just because you don't know what else you're going to do, so you just keep going, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, I, you mentioned it. I mean, just some of the feelings. I mean, you can't really explain it. Me getting into strength training, just, I mean, there's certain things, man, that you just try to break people. And, I mean, you you just, you have your breaking point that first day, man. And it's a lonely feeling. Like, what you're talking about, because the shit, you were state player of the year. I was runner up. I'm sure you were up there. I mean, and then you come up here, and the first day, you're like, damn, I don't know. <laughs> Tomorrow? <Dude. laughs> hey. So that first day, I'm a, a I, in high school, I was a 400 pound bencher in high school at like 225 pounds. So we go out, we do the warm up and the warm up, yeah. right? And the, the, like the speed training, the hurdles and stuff. I'm puking mm -hmm. and every, I'm just smoked. Everyone's tired. And they're like, all right, let's go lift weights. And I'm like, finally, yeah. let's get <laughs> so, into so the weight room. Yeah. And I was so gone. But by the time we got in there, I couldn't do the 35 pound dumbbells on dumbbell yep. bench. Yep. That's how, that's how like destroyed my body so, was. And so I just kept puking in the weight room and then puked after we finally went out and did some conditioning. I was glad we got our conditioning in because the stuff before that wasn't. Oh, yeah. I, again, I had some tough times, too. I, I just, you know, first practice, first workout. I, but after that, I thought it was okay. Uh, question for this one's for Teddy, but I want to hear it personally. This will be the last one. It's great. Um, T wants to know, at Sooner RF wants to know, Teddy, what's the best game you've witnessed from the booth? And then Perk will just say, uh, what's the best game you've seen since, uh, since you graduated? Okay. Best game I've witnessed from the booth. Man. Um, <sighs> Everybody says up. Tennessee, Baylor. Tennessee was great. I wasn't in the booth for that one, but I'll, I'll count that. Tennessee was really good. It's better than Baylor. The Baylor thing. At Baylor. Yeah. I mean, that was a great game, but Tennessee was different. You know, Tennessee is – you got to see Baker. Like, you didn't know going in – how good Baker was going to be. And you really weren't even sure in that game, but the one thing you knew was this dude is going to fight and scrap and claw for everything, and the team fed off of him. Um, so, yeah, that game was great. The atmosphere was unbelievable. I would probably say the Tennessee thing. It would be Georgia if we would have came out uh, the with the, the W there because that was a – that was a great game. The atmosphere was unbelievable. I, I, think, I, I went to the Georgia game, too. Yeah, it was, that was, that that was, was great. Game. That's what I was going to say. Really? Yeah. Well, man, anything else, you guys, man? It's been a great podcast. I thank you guys again, man. I, I want everybody to know that y'all each had, you know, a collective. Y'all helped me a lot. I'll just fucking say it. Y'all were great <laughs> football players, but great leaders, mentors. Um, really appreciate you guys coming on. We should do it again sometime. That was right? fun, yeah, man. Absolutely. You guys do a great job. Well, thank I'll, you, I'm, I'll come on anytime you want. Appreciate you, Perk. Appreciate you. Uh, Brad Reed, we appreciate you, yeah, man. man. Put some good highlights with this. It'll be another great episode of Fullback You.